Charities. Um, last year, they helped over almost 30,000 families, totaling um, just about 88,000 individuals last year. So they help a lot of people, needy people in our community. It's a pretty big program. Um, 1.6 million pounds of food were packaged in, and distributed in their warehouse, and uh, a lot of work goes into that as well. Um, a striking number of 43% of their clients are um, minors, actually below 18. So. They work closely with kids, and the counseling service is a big part of that um, as well. And the Fresno chapter serves and assists 73 outreach programs in the rural surrounding areas. So before we talk about what exactly we did, I kind of want to talk about uh, what it looked like before we started taking action with Catholic Charities and sort of what they wanted from our participation with them. So if you look on the left of the slide there, you see their Facebook kind of the before. It doesn't even have a profile picture. You know, there's a hundred likes. I don't, I think the last post was about a month before the picture was taken. So not really any activity as far as the Facebook goes. Like it existed, but they weren't doing anything. With it. And the Twitter was not existing. They had never had any experience with Twitter. And when we talked to them, we mentioned that all these different social media, Facebook, Twitter, and then we also mentioned things like LinkedIn and Instagram. But they said they wanted to focus more on Facebook and Twitter, and that instead of having a bunch of different social media outlets, they kind of just wanted to focus on these main two. So we definitely kept that in mind when working with them. So what we did with them, the biggest, the bulk of our work was um, getting their Facebook page kind of straightened out, getting it set up. They had it as a um, as a page, but they only had, they didn't have any one central administrator on their page. Um, and they wanted help with getting a central administrator, um, which is Sandy Setti, and then having Kelly Lillis and then their operations manager, Jody Foster, be able to add content, but um, not be able to actually fiddle with the settings because neither of them felt confident enough they felt like the best option would be to have one person controlling settings and having the other two be able to add content when they felt it was needed. Um, and so on the left, you can see their Facebook page. Um, we got their, um, a picture of the sign out in front of their uh, operations center as their um, cover photo and then got their, the Central Valley's logo um, as their profile picture and the number of likes went up by a little. Um, we won't attribute that specifically to our work, but it probably didn't hurt. Um, no, but it, um, and then also we got them posting. And we talked about, with Sandy, um, about what she should be posting. Um, she was really more curious about, they wanted a lot of help. They had ideas on you know, what to post. Um, they needed a lot more help with the technical how to post, um, and how to upload pictures, and how to, to do various things. Um, and so we helped them a lot with that, um, and got them up. Uh, in our, our last meeting with them, which was last week, we got them to where we uploaded a um, image for their advertisement for their upcoming charity dinner, which is actually tonight, um, so that they can start pushing their final advertising for that through the social media. Um, and then the second front we took was setting up a Twitter account for them. 
Um, and, and we took the same approach. We, we decided to use the same profile picture and the same cover photos so that um, it was kind of a, a unanimous image between all of their accounts. Um, and we got Sandy organized on, again, what to post, how to post, and kind of some of the little intricacies of Twitter and you know, the 140 character limit and whatnot. Um, and then the last part, and this is what the Sandy really wanted after we mentioned it to her, um, was we set them up on Hootsuite. And unfortunately, I don't have a picture of their Hootsuite um, because we don't actually have access to it, only they have access. Um, but she wanted something where she could spend an hour on a Sunday afternoon putting together their social media plan for the week and then send it out, which is exactly what we thought Hootsuite would fall you know, right into that category perfectly. Um, so they were very relieved when we got Hootsuite. Um, and then our next part. So as Matt was saying, um, they kind of needed a little more help with the technical aspect of, you know, how to change privacy settings, add administrators, post things, even simple things like logging in, logging out, that sort of thing. And so that's kind of kind of where we came in to help them out. So, um, <clears throat> All right, so one of the first things we did was uh, create a handbook for them. And uh, in this handbook, we kind of did a wide variety of things. One of the first things we did was how to add or edit the administrators. Um, because you know if they have one person managing it, they might need more than one person to kind of help out in case that person can't make it or can't do it. And so um, we just created kind of step-by-step -step instructions. You know, uh, We have screenshots, we have the um, the instructions above where you know we say click edit page then scroll down admin roles uh, type in the name of the person you want to add so somewhat simple things to people like us who are technologically at, you know advanced but for them it's something really new and so we want to make it as user friendly as possible uh, one of the other things we did was um, kind of just adding basic information so we again did the same process um, took a screenshot and so here you know we're just showing them that okay you know they can include a link to their official page they can put their name address city all that stuff um, next thing here is the add information add video or add videos and photos so uh, let's say they have a event going on they can just take a, you know a picture or something and just go ahead and click the link and add it in here's the privacy settings um, where let's say someone's really bothering them or somebody's you know posting rude things about them they can go ahead and like block them so how to stop someone from bothering me or who can see my stuff you know if they want certain people to see certain things um, next is how to check notifications and messages where everyone knows in the top left corner there's the bubble and the globe you can click that if you have new notifications or messages and then here is tips for posting content it's just kind of obvious general things so you know uh, uh, Items posted by national headquarters, uh, you know, they can kind of just copy and paste things or uh, include in just basic information. And we also included um, etiquette where, you know, as a charity, they don't really want to include things that kind of alienate them or kind of make them, you know, look bad or controversial. And so we kind of said try to keep it nonpartisan. Um, not really, you don't want to keep personal updates for this. This is more just professional things, charity page. Um, and keep the post short, you know, just basic things. And along with that, um, it's this whole thing is kind of a how-to, you know, if you're trying to teach your grandmother how to do things, then this is how, this is the kind of approach you would do it. Not saying they're bold, but this is just how you have to go through teaching somebody a new, a new technology. So we went through, you know, logging into Twitter, the main page, what each portion is, um, you know, how to post on Twitter, how to post on Facebook, how to, you know, there's the 140 character limit. Also, it says, we have made sure to emphasize do not hashtag everything, because seeing 50 hashtags really kind of puts people off to reading the whole post. So we went through settings, that kind of stuff. And finally, we focused on hoots. Oh, we have also do's and don'ts of Twitter posting. Um, which is similar to uh, Facebook, just a little bit, a little bit more tailored to the uh, shorter story. 
And finally is Hootsuite. So I created, I used my own page here as an example, just because we didn't have um, the access to their account. So with this handbook, we hope to accomplish the task of teaching them how to use social media just flat out. And I feel like we did that pretty well because now they're up and running on Hootsuite. They're able to post everything at different times during the week without having to actually go in themselves because they're running a very skeleton crew. So with only one person having access, they need to have a complete view of their social media. And Hootsuite did that well. We got them established on Twitter, um, getting them posting regularly there. Same thing on Facebook. We consolidated their Facebook pages into one main one, and it looks great. So I feel like we've helped move Catholic charities into the world of tomorrow. Thank you. I have a comment. Um, looking at your handbook, it looks really good. Like you took the time to write out things step by step, and I just I hope that they appreciate all the the time and effort you put into that because it's very detailed. And so I just. I saw that Twitter uh, is up and running. I saw some posts on the right side. Um, how's the activity going so far? I mean, I'm sh I know it's brand new, and I don't expect too much activity. But it's it's been sporadic. Um, this week, they were kind of trying to get through. We we worked with Sadie, uh, not Sadie, Sandy, on um, Thursday and Friday of last week. Mostly was when we got the bulk of the actual work on getting them set up done. Um, and they were kind of in crisis management Thursday and Friday because they have this huge dinner tonight. So they were kind of like, as soon as we get through the dinner, you know, her, her focus could shift to um, looking at this, because their next major event isn't for a few months now, and she can spend time doing this. But they were kind of on, we need to get through the dinner first. Um, but she was very excited about food sweet. I thought it was interesting that they could figure out that they, um, for the Facebook, that they just they knew they needed just one admin and the other two to do content because a lot of times everyone wants to be the admin and well, that really yeah. messes things up. Yeah, they specifically said, um, well, first they only trust a few people with being able to post this information um, because they don't just want anybody having access to that. So that's how they're viewed in the public, and secondly, it's. They, a couple of the people didn't feel like they had the technical prowess to be able to mess with all the settings properly. Um, and there was one person, Sandy Seti, who was in charge of that as kind of part of her job description. So it just kind of made sense to make her the overall administrator so she could add and subtract people and give people new jobs, as well as the other two people, um, just so they had access to create content but they couldn't accidentally click something that would deactivate the Facebook page, which would be bad. <laughs> I'm thinking you think there's a market out there for people to just set up everyone's social media, you know, suite for them. Yeah. Don't you think? Be so there, there is a whole market. Agencies do that, yeah. They do that. They have a specifically uh, online media person. So it's a new job that's come out of it. Well, um, Catholic Charities actually works through Federico Consulting which is a local firm that does kind of online stuff. And Federico is the one that holds, has, in the past has held their kind of social media aspect mm -hmm. together. So it's, there is a market, I guess, for that. And I guess it could be pretty lucrative. <laughs> so as a group, how did you find working with them? Because I know there was some communication they were issues, a, but they were in the future. A little tough to work with, but I think once it kind of, we got straightened out that um, originally we were working directly with Kelly Lillis, who's their CEO. Um, and she really, at first, uh, I don't think the communication was there that she was getting it across to us or that we weren't picking up on that Sandy said he was the person we really needed to work with. Um, and once we got set up with Sandy, everything went really smooth, you know. Mm -hmm from that point, everything went fairly smoothly, but at first it was a little rocky. 
Um, the other issue that we had was just scheduling conflict. All of us were uh, classes in the morning, and they worked like a seven to three day, and all of us were in class pretty much until three, so finding scheduling was really difficult. Um, and then again, they work a really, really skeleton crew, so the three main people, um, Kelly, Sandy, and Jody, were really like, well, we can get you 15 minutes here in between two meetings, and we can get you 20 minutes over here in between two meetings, and what we really needed was like, let's just sit down for an hour, crank this out, and then, you know, maybe do another hour next week, but, you know, we need a block of time. We can't get 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there. Um, and eventually, once we kind of came to terms on that, both groups, we, um, it worked a lot smoother. Overall, they were a good group to work with, though. They were very, um, really receptive of what we had to offer, and they, they kind of knew from the beginning what they wanted and what they didn't want. Um, you know, they wanted something that one person could easily manage in less than an hour a week, and they didn't want to have, you know, four million different tools, uh, you know, trying to manage all of that, which I think was one thing that they were a little worried about when we started. At their first meeting, they really were pushing, like, we want to get through this next year with Facebook and Twitter, and then we can look at, you know, adding in Pinterest, or adding in Instagram, or adding in a blog, or something like that, but let's get through the first year and then expand afterwards. Um, and they wanted to gauge their, how effective it was, and gauge their, their own comfort level. Um, because this is all very new. Um, using social media in a business setting was all very new to them. Um, yeah. I like how you really responded to your clients' needs, because I would have been trying to push more on them. So I think that worked really well. <laughs> yeah. Any other comments, questions? Well, thank you.